When I first saw Jet Rocket 2 The Wrath of Taikai, I was pretty impressed with what Shinna Multimedia managed to do visually for just a simple 3DS eShop title. Having never played the original hit WiiWare game, Jet Rocket, back in 2010, it would make sense to try out its sequel considering the original garnered some praise. Plus, just seeing what Shinna was able to do graphically for Jet Rocket 2 just drew me in. But when it comes to actually playing a game, the gameplay is what really matters and the graphics are the frosting on the cake to make the whole experience that much better. But does Jet Rocket 2 succeed at being a fun and engaging title that is worth your attention, or does it fall flat on its face? Well, it's somewhere in the middle. If the title of the game doesn't give it away already, Jet Rocket 2 follows the footsteps of the planetary inspector, Jet Rocket, as he sets out to take down his arch-rival Kaiser Taikai who has resurfaced and captured Rocket's little robotic buddies as a means of revenge. To stop him, you'll be platforming your way through over 30 different levels that are mixed between different play styles such as your standard 2D platforming sections and full-on 3D platforming. And as you would expect from a platformer, you'll have to deal with multiple baddies along with cascading through different environmental hazards such as lasers and missiles to test your reflexes. And to give you a little variety to your standard jumping affair, a couple items will be found throughout the levels, such as a jetpack to reach higher areas and hover discs which are used for the same exact reason but are able to move left and right. It would have been nice if the game included some more unique power-ups as these are the only ones that you will find besides the one that just allows you to swim. Other than that, Jet Rocket 2 is a very basic platformer without any bells and whistles to make it truly stand out as a must-play title. It's not bad by any means, but much could have been done to make it truly shine. It's not good enough to just make a game look good, because when it comes down to it, the actual gameplay is what really matters. The controls work quite well, but there's not much about each particular level that really makes it unique. There are some parts that seem to be inspired by 3D land, like moving cogs or rotating blocks, which is neat, along with there being times where the game messes with different ideas, like playing through an old school 2D shoot 'em up. But the rest of the levels can be somewhat plain. Shinin also managed to create some 3D platforming stages, which are really great to see, but they are kind of disappointing, as it feels like there wasn't much thought that was put into designing them, as a lot of times there will be parts that are just full of empty space with nothing much there. Plus, Jet moves at a snail's pace, so that can try your patience, but at least he can dash around to speed things up. On the other hand, the handful of boss fights that will be encountered are surprisingly fun and challenging, having died multiple times fighting them. Each one feels different from the other with dangerous hazards to avoid, and they will challenge your platforming prowess. The same can't be said for the designs of the bosses though, as they are basically just reskins one another. One thing I did find pretty annoying in Jet Rocket 2 though was when receiving damage from an enemy which causes your little dude to fly across the screen and potentially fall off a platform. I don't know why they decided to design it like this as it can be frustrating, and just taking away a piece of heart without any side effects would have been preferred. I also encountered a bug in the game where it would crash when I ran out of lives and received a game over. It didn't happen all the time, which is a good thing, but it is something to make mention of as it disrupts the flow of gameplay. It can be easily fixed in a quick update though, so it isn't a huge deal. To encourage exploration, almost every level features hidden passages or bonus levels where you'll find orbs full of extra lives or solar cells which can be redeemed on the level select screen to play fun, simplistic minigames to earn more lives or more heart pieces. Plus, there are 24 harder to reach photos to be found throughout the world, and if you manage to collect them all, you unlock a simple bonus attack mode where you play through the bonus stages and try to collect as many solar cells as possible in the allotted time limit. It's a nice little distraction, but probably something you won't come back to after a few times of playing it. The visuals for The Wrath of Taikai are one of the more noteworthy parts of this game, as they managed to tweak their game engine to make it run at 60 frames per second even with the 3D effect on. The game utilizes 3D models for about everything besides the backgrounds, and Jet, the enemies, and the environments don't look half bad. Plus, being able to run around a full 3D environment with the 3D effect on is nice to see. On the other hand, the music for Jet Rocket 2 has a more electronic techno vibe to it that sits well with the overall tone of the game and refrains from being annoying. There isn't anything particularly memorable about the soundtrack, but the visuals and music tracks get the job done. And in terms of the game's replay value though, well you'll probably be able to beat the game in under 4 hours, and that is with collecting and finding almost all of the hidden passages and collectible photos. That doesn't mean the game is over though, as you may just unlock a little something afterwards that will double your playtime. So for a $9 eShop title, you do get your money's worth in the amount of content it is packing. Overall, Jet Rocket 2 The Wrath of Taikai is really nothing special with its pretty basic platforming and level designs. The game does try to mess around with different gameplay elements to make it more enjoyable, and it is welcoming, but it just didn't feel like that was enough to make it truly shine. I haven't played the WiiWare title, so I don't know how it stacks up to the original, but I'd say the sequel is a very average game. It's not a bad game by any means, but it is also not great either. You might want to hold off on purchasing Jet Rocket 2 for something a little more noteworthy, unless you're in dire needs of playing something. 
So in all, the GamingPixelShow.com is awarding Jet Rocket 2 the Wrath of Tai Kai with a 3 out of 5. But that will bring us to the end of this review. If you liked what you saw, please give it a thumbs up and add to your favorites and all that good stuff. You can stay tuned for more news videos, video reviews, and Nasty Nintendo Crazy episodes. But I'll talk to you later in the next episode, guys. Bye!